All right, this is the Quest 2, and you might be asking yourself on whether it's still worth it, even though it's been out a few years, especially when recently the Quest Pro just came out. Well, I'm gonna answer all the questions you have about the Quest 2 so you can make a decision on whether this is a good buy for you or whether it's something to wait on for the future. I wanna start by saying that the Quest 2 is probably that first standalone device that really kind of broke through in the VR world where it kind of went to the masses a lot more than previous iterations. And that's because the Quest 2 has really stepped up its game because one, you don't need a PC. This has everything on it that you need. You can play games. There's even a desktop app specifically for the Quest that you can use. But also, if you do have a PC that's capable of playing PC VR games, you can do that through Steam VR or some other options that are out there, meaning that you can use it if you need to, but there's a huge library available for your Quest 2 directly in the headset with no PC required. The big benefit of that, of course, is that there are no cables. So you can just kind of use this on its own, pass it to somebody there, share it with you know, your kids, share it with whoever it is that's gonna be there, or you're completely on your own. So you don't need any type of cables to play this. Now, you might notice that mine actually looks slightly different in terms of the strap department. The front remains the same, but because the Quest 2 is so popular, there's a lot of accessories considering that there is so many things that you can do with this. So this is a third party head strap that I have with some extra battery life on it. For those of you that are looking for a longer session, a lot of those are available on Amazon that you can check those out, but that really is all about personal comfort. But let's talk about a few of the particulars because one of them is the storage size. Originally, these were 64 and 128. Earlier this year, they switched it to the standard of 128 and 256. Well, do you need 256? Probably not. I'm a VR enthusiast, and even I don't use 256 gigs on my Quest Pro, and for most games, other than a handful, they're normally gonna be seven gigs or less in size, with many of them being less than five gigs. There's only a few games that are really that large. It's only if you're trying to keep a huge library, but once you buy a game, it's on your account. You can remove it from your headset and add it back at any time, and the odds of you filling up 256 gigs are probably pretty slim unless you are an experienced VR user when you know that there's a whole lot of other things you can do with that. But even then, not many people are using more than 128 gigs. There are, of course, two controllers that come with it. Again, a lot of accessories for these, but these work in communication with the headset. And that's why you have the halos on this. There's a lot of really cool things that you can do with the controllers when it comes to accessories. Do you need them? No, everything is gonna function just fine. It's got the wrist straps as well. So you're gonna be good to go with just the headset and the controllers, and that's all that you need. A couple of other big changes Changes that used to keep people from wanting to get this was the need for a Facebook account. Earlier this year, they also made a change to where you no longer need a Facebook account to connect to your headset. Now you can create a separate meta account so that they aren't connected in any way. You can connect them, but it's no longer required to have it connected to Facebook in any way, shape, or form, which is something that a lot of people had concerns about before. Another important thing to know is that the headset actually comes with a spacer if you wear glasses, and if you have big glasses, you might be in a little bit of trouble, but for most glasses users, you're gonna be there. I would recommend that you try it out without glasses on because the default distance of VR is around six feet, so you don't necessarily need long range viewing if you are far sighted, whereas if you're near sighted, it might be a little bit different story. Now, while it's super cool to be able to play in the Quest 2, just how much can you actually do? Well, those are some of the most important parts because this is an ever expanding library of things that you can do. You can have a lot of social experiences. You can watch YouTube in VR. There's big screen where you can watch movies. There's so many different things that you can do that are just plain old not games. And there's a whole bunch of really, thing, really cool things that you can do around that which makes it a really good experience for basically anybody of all ages. There's all kinds of different things that you can do from games that are gonna be strictly for kids to games that are gonna be more of that older teen or adult oriented games that are gonna be a little bit different. So there's gonna be something for everyone. There's controls on there so that you can make accounts for your kids if you are buying this for them so that you can limit what they can access. There's so many different things that you can do. And if you've thought about it and you have questions about it, there's probably a solution for that in the headset, which means that you don't really have to worry too much about that if you're purchasing it for somebody else. If you're purchasing it for yourself, 
well, you can go to your heart's content and do whatever you want. And that's cool because we all know that Beat Saber is gonna be really popular and everybody knows Beat Saber, but there's just a vast majority of games that are gonna be available without needing a PC. Red Matter 2 came out. This is what really shows off the graphics that are capable, a very new age game. But there's so many different things that you can do from social experiences to just hanging out by yourself to playing a wide variety of games or interacting with others and just doing some really advanced stuff that it's really hard to showcase in video. VR is one of those things you have to experience because seeing a video of it doesn't do justice to how cool VR is. And that's where things get really hard to kind of convey that it is much cooler than what you see on the screen because there's so much capabilities and the way it transforms you into those worlds is really remarkable. Now, Meta has said that there is a Quest 3 on the way down the road that might be towards the end of 2023, but there is no confirmed date. So if you're wondering, is the Quest 2 still a good buy? I really think that this thing is a solid purchase. VR last year was one of the big times around this time that it really exploded. Everybody started getting a lot of VR headsets and it really took to the masses. And this seems to be the headset that is transforming the world of it. There's still a long way to go for VR, but the Quest 2, make no mistake about it, is the quintessential VR headset right now in 2022 and going and beyond.